Okay guys, propellers off, phones and iPads down. Before we dive into exactly how to execute cinematic shots, we need to understand exactly what aerial cinematography is and how it has evolved because, well, that's the best way to understand how to execute shots in practice. Now the goal of this section is to get you to rethink the way you see the imagery through your screen and start thinking like a cinematographer. So let's begin. Let's forget the aerial component for a second. What is cinematography? In a nutshell, cinematography is about the art of visual storytelling. This encompasses many different elements, each as important as the other, in understanding why some images resonate with us and why some are just dull and uninteresting. It's important to remember that it's not just capturing the visuals on screen, but it's how it's interpreted and shown to the audience through these elements. It's all about communicating with the viewer. Essentially, cinematography is a language. Fortunately, these elements aren't some mystery that only a select few in the world have access to and knowledge of. These elements are built on principles of concrete understanding. They are a set of rules that can be followed to ensure the desired results are achieved. After all, rules are at the core of how we speak to each other, and our understanding of cinematography works the exact same way. Now, you might have some great shots you want to replicate and maybe even come up with from scratch, but there are still fundamental basics that need to be adhered to so you know how to break them, if you wish. The more we understand the fundamental basics of cinematography, the more we understand the language of cinematography. Cornerstones of cinematography. All right, so without further ado, here are some cornerstones of cinematography. Lighting, how the subject or scene is lit, the direction of the shadows and sun, the moods that these convey to the viewer. Shot size, wide angles or narrow view. These can be interpreted in both a dramatic or claustrophobic manner. Camera focus, what is the most important information you want to get out of a scene? Whatever is in focus will draw the eye. Shot composition, how all the elements are placed within the scene. Camera placement, Placing the camera below a subject or object can portray an aggressive or assertiveness to the scene, whereas being above can have the opposite effect or looking like an omnipresent godlike presence. Where you put the camera doesn't just allow you to tell the story, but it tells the audience what to think or feel about the story they're watching. Camera movement. Slow camera tilts can build suspense, but so can fast pans and push-ins. A steady cam that glides through a scene following a person fills us with ease, an almost godly perspective of the scene unfolding before us. Where a shaky camera makes us feel uneasy, like this is happening right in front of us and anything could happen, whereas we're witnessing the real world. It's not just what's happening on screen. The language of cinematography does more than that. It emphasizes what's happening off screen too. The way video evokes emotion can make people feel sad, happy, or scared. Cinematic language bypasses our critical thinking and dives deeper into the part of the subconscious brain that we understand on an instinctual level. Now that we have an understanding of what cinematography is in the traditional sense, let's extrapolate this to show how it applies to moving the camera off the ground and permanently into the air. Now there are several movies from the late 1940s listed as the first use of a helicopter on a commercial film shoot. But it was the 1955 TV series Highway Patrol with its flyover title sequence and frequent use of a Bell H-47 that put the helicopter squarely in the public eye. Since then, helicopters have been used for their speed to track fast-moving objects and ability to fly at a slower pace to build tension. However, there was always the issue of an area that wasn't being serviced in the realm of aerial cinematography, and that was the space under 400 feet. Now, as populations grew and populous areas became larger, it was becoming increasingly dangerous and more difficult to get helicopters under that 400 feet in order to capture subjects closer to the action, but still from a dynamic point of view that a camera above a subject can offer. And as they say, necessity is the mother of invention and thus gave birth to the first drones to carry a film payload, effectively changing the game forever. With this new tool at the cinematographer's disposal, the same principles apply to ensure the cinematic language mentioned earlier is still applied to ensure the audience understands the intention of the visuals on display. So lighting, where is the sun? Long shadows versus golden hour, sunrise and sunset, and how to choose the right light for your scenario. Shot size, what type of shot is it? Is the subject far away? Is it establishing shot or close up? Camera focus. 
What is the most important information you want to get out of the scene? Whatever is in focus will draw the eye. Shot composition, how all the elements are placed in the scene. In this case, rule of thirds. Camera placement, are you following a subject or revealing from behind something to build tension? Camera movement, push in, establishing, pullback shots, ending shots, tilt ups, reveals, orbits. We're going to be diving deeper into the types of essential shots used in the fundamentals of cinematography in section four, the creative process. But with the knowledge of this cinematic language as a basis, the goal is for this to become a second nature for you when you're out on your shoot, so you understand the shots you want to get and how to get them with the tools you have at your disposal. All right guys, that was a brief overview of what is cinematography. Next, we'll be moving on to the different types of drones you can use for aerial cinematography for every skill level and budget. So see you in the next one.